Okay, troops, it's the turn of momentum, and in fact, conservation of momentum today. Momentum is quite simply the mass of an object times its velocity, mass in kilograms, velocity in meters per second. Here's an example of a car, mass a thousand, travelling at 20 meters per second, its momentum is 20,000 kilogram meters per second. But be aware, objects with a large mass that are moving relatively slowly, like an oil tanker, or indeed an elephant on a skateboard. Large mass, small velocity, it can still have quite a large momentum. 600 kilogram meters per second here. Be careful with the units. It's not kilograms per meters per second, it's kilogram meters per second. A small bullet can also have a large momentum if it's traveling fast enough. For example, a 50 gram bullet traveling at 1,000 meters per second, its momentum will be 0 0.05 times 1,000, 50 kilogram meters per second. Now, just like energy is conserved, momentum is also conserved. In fact, there is the law of conservation of momentum, which states that the total momentum before a collision is always equal to the total momentum after a collision in the absence of any external forces. Now we're going to have a look at a couple of demos of experiments to see if this holds true. We're going to use a linear air track, some vehicles, a couple of light gates and two TSA computers. Here's a photograph of the apparatus. So. We can sketch this apparatus like this. There's our two vehicles before, vehicle one, vehicle two. And if they stick together, there are our two vehicles after the collision. And we'll be using this diagram quite a lot. Okay, here's the experimental setup. We have our linear air track, uh, which has got holes all the way along to, for air to blow through. We have got two light gates. Each one is connected to a TSA computer. It's going to be set to measure speed. There's the first one. And there is the second one. Now, first thing we have to do then is we have to make sure that this track is level. It's horizontal. It's flat. And the way that we will do that is we will give this little vehicle a shove. We'll better turn the air on first. So, once we turn the air on, we give this vehicle a shove and if we have got rid of all the friction, then these two TSA computers should be reading the same velocity. There we have it, 0 0.57 meters per second. That track is ready. Right, first experiment we're going to do then is we have a large vehicle with a pin on the front of it and we have a similar vehicle it's exactly the same mass but it has a little bit of blue tack on it and the idea here is that when I give this first vehicle a shove it will pass through the first light gate so let's get that ready and waiting then it will collide with the second vehicle and they will stick together and go through the second light gate. Let's see how we go on. First vehicle, collision, through the second light gate. Let's see how those two speeds compare then. Speed of the first vehicle on its own, 0.53 meters per second. When the two of them stuck together, 0 0.27 meters per second. Let's have a look at this on paper. Right, here's our setup before and after the collision. So on the left hand side, mass number one and mass number two were the same, 363 grams. The first speed was 0.53 meters per second and the second vehicle was stationary. Afterwards, both masses stuck together. So the combined mass, 726 grams. And the two of them stuck together were moving at 0.27 meters per second after the collision. If our conservation of momentum is correct, then the total momentum before equals the total momentum afterwards. 
So the momentum of the first vehicle plus the momentum of the second vehicle should be equal to the combined momentum afterwards. So there we have our 0.363 times 0.53, that's the momentum of the first one. Second one was zero because it was stationary. And afterwards, there is our mass times velocity. And on both sides, 0.19 equals 0.19. Momentum is conserved. Bingo! Right, the next experiment we're going to do is a large vehicle colliding with a smaller vehicle. And we'll measure the mass of them later on. So we'll put the small vehicle in the middle, give the larger one a push, and again the two of them stick together and go through that second light gate. Let's have a look at the first speed, 0.48, and when they stick together, 0.33 metres per second. Now what about the mass of each one? The large vehicle, 363 grams. The small vehicle, 166 grams. There it is. Now let's look at this on paper. Here we go then, a large vehicle colliding with a smaller vehicle and sticking together after the collision. There's a larger one, smaller one, and the two masses together, 529 grams. And the initial velocity of the large vehicle before the collision was 0.48 meters per second from our TSA computer. And the combined velocity afterwards of the two vehicles was 0.33 meters per second from our second TSA computer. Again, we're trying to verify that the total momentum before is equal to the total momentum afterwards. So, here's our first vehicle, second vehicle, and the combined vehicles afterwards. Let's put the numbers in. First vehicle, 363 grams times its velocity, 0.48, and the second vehicle, was a stationary zero momentum. Afterwards, the two vehicles stuck together, so their combined mass, 529 grams, was moving at 0 0.33 meters per second. And so, drum roll, total momentum before equals total momentum afterwards. Momentum once again is conserved. Bingo! Now in the previous two collisions, the vehicles stuck together. This time we have got magnets on each vehicle and those magnets are repelling each other. This time, the two vehicles are the same mass. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to push this first one. It's going to pass through the first light gate. It's going to interact with the second one. Well, let's see what happens. So that TSA is waiting, this TSA is waiting, here we go. So I'm going to push the first vehicle, there it goes, first one stops, second one continues through the second light gate. Let's note these two speeds then, 0 0.51, 0 0.51. Okay, back on paper again, here's our setup. The two identical vehicles before and after a collision. And we're going to see if our relationship for conservation of momentum is the same before and after. So, vehicle number one was moving, velocity of 0.51. Plus vehicle number two was stationary, no momentum. Afterwards, vehicle one stopped. And vehicle 2 had a velocity of 0.51. So again, momentum before and after is equal. Momentum is conserved. In fact, momentum is exchanged. You may well have seen this before. A classic example of this is Newton's cradle. Okay, final little demo here. Again, we're using the magnets, repelling magnets on each vehicle. This time, it's a large mass interacting with a smaller mass. So we'll set our TSAs so that we're waiting again. And this time, watch what happens when these two collide with each other. So the magnets are going to repel each other. Large mass hitting a smaller mass. Here we go. Okay. Smaller mass set off at an increased velocity. And the larger mass kept going in the original direction as well. Now... We have three velocities here. 
0.44 was the velocity of the first vehicle. Now, 0.49 was the velocity of the smaller mass and 0.22 was the velocity of the large mass after the collision. Okay, this time a larger massed vehicle, 363 grams, hits a smaller vehicle, 166 grams. Larger vehicle has an initial velocity and the smaller vehicle is stationary. After the collision, the two of them separate out and the large vehicle has a velocity V1, smaller one moves off much faster, V2. All those velocities are in the same direction. Let's put the numbers in. So first vehicle had a velocity of 0.44 times its mass. Second vehicle was stationary, no momentum. After the collision, the 363 gram vehicle was going slower at 0.22 and the smaller vehicle was going at 0.49 meters per second. Remember the larger one slower, the smaller one set off faster. If we do the calculation, the total momentum before was 0.16, the large vehicle's momentum was 0 0.08 and the small vehicle's momentum was 0 0.08. And adding these together, drum roll please, once again, momentum is conserved. Bingo! Right, last demonstration this time, small vehicle hitting a larger vehicle. What do you think is going to happen? Give it a push. Small vehicle rebounds, larger vehicle moves off to the right. How can momentum still be conserved, I hear you ask? Well, remember, velocity is a vector. Velocity in one direction is positive, and the other direction is negative. And that, troops, is conservation of momentum. <laughs>